Good morning, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about addiction and low self-esteem. How they really can work together and not in your favor. But as usual, what I'd like to do is give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez at Starting Point. That's S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com. Startingpoint.com. It's Dr. Luis Gonzalez's business that has two entities. Entity number one is kind of like what I do, which is a addiction recovery coach. What we do is we walk uh, with you from your addiction to your recovery. We walk with you 24 hours at a time, day by day. We never, ever talk about your past. We work on today and tomorrow. On the other side of his business, what he does is he can turn you, that's right, you, into an addiction recovery coach with his educational program. If you possess personality, passion, and professionalism, and you have some sort of addiction background, whether it being your own addiction or uh, uh, an addiction that you've been fighting with someone else, uh, you could possibly be a sponsor, you could have done uh, uh, some work at church, uh, whichever it might be. If you possess those three and the addiction background, maybe you're fighting your own addiction, why don't you call 844-414-8444, Dr. Luis Gonzalez. Uh, he has the starting point and its educational program. I also want to give a shout out to Pam Hemphill. She's on YouTube at uh, with her show. It's called Time to Heal, which uh, focuses on recovery. And she's also on Facebook, also under Time to Heal. She has uh, Channel 11 on Boise, Idaho. Uh, she has uh, approximately 87,000 viewers daily. And her uh, videos can all be seen on my website, one of my websites, which is www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot info. Uh, if you just go to my website, uh, just click on the More tab and you will see Time to Heal watch her videos there go to Facebook and watch them or go to YouTube again time to heal host Pam Hemphill H-E-M-P-H-I-L-L -E -L -L. and of course always a shout out to me I have I just spoke about clearviews.info clearviews.info concentrates strictly and basically on addiction and recovery you can find all the tools you need to beat and work with your addiction daily you will find over 148 videos of my own that I performed, uh, whether or not being daily, because usually it's a, I do six uh, videos a week and then one Throwback Thursday video. But you can see all of them. They all average approximately an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. Enjoy them because every subject, every uh, issue, you can find on those videos and if you don't find something that uh, I have not yet done during one of my shows text me at 631-599-0218 and let me know uh, what you'd like for me to talk about I will make sure it does get on the air uh, we also have my other website which is kinda like what Dr. Luis Gonzalez does go to www.clearreform.com that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E F-O-R-M Dot com. What Clear Reform is, is uh, my addiction recovery uh, coaching business. What I do there is I walk with you 24 hours at a time. I, like Dr. Gonzalez, will not talk about your past. Him and I, we are not counselors and we are not therapists. What we are, are addiction recovery coaches and life coaches. We will help you fight your addiction. We will help you get a well-balanced life during your addiction and therefore uh, uh, going on. It is there at clearreform.com that you can get the help you need to take your life back. Addiction and low esteem. Um, what I got this information from was the CDC and um, there's a lot of reading involved. Uh, as usual, you can tell when I'm reading uh, because you'll get those extra little laughs and when I can't pronounce a word, but I try my best each and every time. Uh, you can also tell when I talk from the heart because that's when I get uh, more uh, compassionate about what I speak about. Not that I'm not compassionate about this, but reading is always different than uh, coming from your heart. Substance abuse offers a temporary escape from low esteem, but it is not the answer. The way that people with themselves uh, view themselves will have an impact on how they experience their life. 
Those who have low self-esteem struggle to find success and happiness, mostly because they do not feel themselves worthy of enjoying such things. Their lack of self-worth will affect every area of their life, especially their relationships with others. You know, I think all of us in life have had an issue with self, uh, with low self-esteem. It could be because you've hit the worst times of your life. I'll tell you, June 22nd, 2013, I did have very low self-esteem because I finally hit rock bottom, but it was the best thing, the best day that could have happened in my life because it was the rock bottom and that self low uh, that low self-esteem that made me reach up to God and ask for guidance and direction. So let me just fix this a little. There we go. So you can get part of my collar in there. There we go. That's a little better, folks. What is self-esteem? How is that defined? Self-esteem is a term used psychologically to describe how humans uh, um, look at themselves or overall how they judge themselves in relation to self-worth. It can be described as confident satisfaction that is an individual has with their own life. The term self-esteem and self-worth tend to be used interchangeable, although feelings of self-esteem tend to be more fluid than self-worth. It, it really comes down to that's how you judge yourself. The causes of self-esteem these are some of the most common causes for self-esteem. If people have suffered from any type of child abuse, any type, physical, sexual, then this can se uh, severely affect the way they view themselves. Children, children lack the knowledge and insight to understand the situation and so they end up blaming themselves for the abuse. It's a shame, but that's really what it happens. The children blame themselves because they were either violently, physically, or sexually abused. If parents fail to make their child feel valued and important, because that goes back to when we talk about a uh, role model and how you need to show compassion, you need to show passion towards your children, then, then this can later lead to poor self-esteem. Often it is not what the parents have said that is the problem, but it's what they have not said. The I love you's, the good job, well done. Those are the things that the children are missing today. Um, receiving too much criticism when growing up can leave behind mental scars. People who always uh, being told that they um, are a failure, they start believing it. Folks, if you're kids are doing great you need to praise them and when they're doing bad don't judge too quick remember they are children and they are learning so this is all a process for them so please you have to have some sort of patience the way people are trained by their peer are treated by their peers is also important for self-esteem one of the most compelling functions of peer group is feedback on behavior being the victim of racism or prejustice will usually change the way people view themselves. The racism, I mean, that, that hopefully that issue is way behind us. But unfortunately, this is not a perfect world. You still have the Archie Bunkers that are out there. And shame on those Archie Bunker types. This is a whole new world with a new society. We have an Afro-American president of the United States we have come such a long way that even the racial issue should stop and it should stop today. Those individuals who have issues around physical appearance can easily develop feelings of low self-esteem. In a modern world, there is too much emphasis placed on physical beauty. And this particularly goes to people that have the weight uh, issues. Folks, you need to either uh, not worry about your weight. I mean, there is a reason that you do need to worry about your weight, and that would be for uh, health reasons. But who cares what other people really think about what you look like? You were created by God to be special just the way you are. However, it is always a good idea to keep in some sort of good shape. It's a good idea to uh, mentally be fit and physically be fit. When people feel that they do not really fit in anywhere, it will change the way they view themselves. The lack of uh, connectiveness uh, with other people is common among people who are dealing with self-esteem uh, self issues. The effects of so, uh, 
self-esteem. Boy, I say that ten times quick. Those who are dealing with low self-esteem may experience many of the following problems. Failure to value one leads to failure to take care of oneself. The person may not see the point of putting much effort into their bodies and their minds. This means that they will be far more likely to suffer from poor physical and mental health. And we just spoke about it. You need to be fit mentally and physically some sort of way. Not believing in oneself will limit one's potential. Remember the analogy of my power of prayer. If your body was a bottle and the inside of your body was full of darkness, which is, let's say, coke in the bottle, and prayer was clear running water, and I put that clear running water on top of you being the bottle, unless you lift the cap of that bottle, and the cap indicates the... Uh, the capabilities that you have, in other words, your, your potential, unless you lift that cap, that clear water of prayer cannot get into the dark coke that's inside. But as min the minute you lift the cap, the clear water goes into the dark bottle and eventually the dark liquid will become clear. It's the cap indicates your capabilities, your limitations. So that's what this is more or less telling you, not believing in oneself will limit one's potential. A person may not be willing to put in these necessary efforts to achieve their dreams because they do not believe it will bring any results. Such people may be convinced that it is um, uh, unnecessary to even try. Individuals with low self-esteem are for more likely to turn to alcohol and drugs as means of escaping their problems, and that's true. So self low, uh, low self-esteem is one of the biggest stressors that there is. People with low self-esteem often end up in abusive relationships, especially if they were abused themselves because they feel right at home again. When people do not value themselves highly, they are more likely to bow to poor uh, peer pressure. Many individuals who end up in a dangerous cult suffer from so, uh, low self-esteem. It can be hard for such individuals to trust other people. They may believe that anyone who is trying to help them has a hidden gender. These individuals will be highly insecure in relationships. If they do not value themselves, then they will find it very hard to believe that other people can value them. These are all indicators. These are all reasons. These are all things that possibly will turn this or these people with self low, uh, low self-esteem to going to alcohol and drugs. The symptoms of low self-esteem. When people suffer from low self-esteem, it will usually be obvious in the way that they behave. These are some of the symptoms of uh, self-low esteem. Low self-esteem. I keep saying that backwards. Such individuals live in fear for, of change and uncertainty. They become creature in, uh, of habit. They just are so comfortable in their own environment. They will tend to assume that other people think badly of them. People with low self-esteem tend to see everything in black and white. Things are just either right or wrong. There is no in-between. Such individuals are always putting themselves down. A bit humorous self-deep appreciation can be charming, but some people never have anything good to say about themselves. And that's sad. Because when you look in the mirror, what do you see? I see me, a reformed, transformed person from what I used to be. I used to always be a good person, but alcoholism kept me back. Alcoholism made me say things and do things that, at a norm, I would never, never have done. So I see a different me. What do you see? When people have uh, low self-esteem, they tend to always be suspicious of other people's motives. High expectations of other people, followed by disappointment when these individuals seem to let them down. Low self-esteem leads to jealousy in relationships. High expectations of other people will always surely seem like when they don't come through that they, the other person or the person with the low self-esteem was let down. People in this category may achieve something but will not feel satisfied. They find it hard to deal with compliments and will doubt 
the sincerity of those who offer the compliments. It's a matter of trust. It's a matter of uh, they just been let down so many times. They find it hard to deal with compliments. I mean, that's that sad because when somebody compliments you, that is such a lift. These individuals will all will often also be too needy, and this can put too much pressure on their relationship. They will also tend to choose partners who are unsuitable. It's bad judgment. Addiction and low self-esteem. Low self-esteem is one of the characteristics of an addictive personality. When people first begin using drugs and alcohol, it will increase their self-confidence. Of course, you get the, what do they call the Superman muscles. They become less concerned with what other people think of them. The individual begins to rely on these substances in order to cope with life in itself. Addiction means that the person's life begins to all uh, to fall apart as the self-esteem hits an all-time low. In AA, they describe the situation as alcohol gave me wings, but um, then it took away the sky. Lack of self-worth can be uh, keep people trapped in addiction. The drug and alcohol is just a temporary uh, escape of what really exists within you if you have low self-esteem. There are so many ways to, to come out of the shell of uh, self uh, or low self-esteem. There are so many ways, but it has to start with you are willing uh, to, to start. I mean, you have to reach out to your higher power, and you have to listen to some of the things that I'm going to read to you now. Underage substance abuse and low self-esteem. Children with low self-esteem are far more likely to abuse alcohol and drugs. They will be more likely to, uh, to bow to peer pressure with their friends, start to experiment with these substances. They will also find the idea of escaping reality more appealing because it means getting away from who they really are. Those individuals who use alcohol and drugs at the young age will have a far greater risk of developing an addiction later on. These are things to increase. Write these down. Increase your sel uh, low self-esteem. If you have low self-esteem, these are some of the things that people can do to improve their self-esteem. It can help if people become more aware of one's inner thoughts control your thoughts. Mental chatter is often the real source of the problem. That's one of my biggest, I mean, I don't have low self-esteem, but when my mind starts thinking about a certain issue and I concentrate on it, it's amazing what the mind can do to you, and I've become better at that now. Practices such as uh, mindfulness, uh, Meditation can allow people to see what's going on with their thinking patterns. Once the problem is identified, it becomes much easier to deal with. Loving kindness uh, mediation is also another great way to increase self-esteem. It is vital that people learn to challenge their faulty thinking. For example, if they decide that another person does not like them, they need to objectively examine the evidence for this. Why do you feel that this person doesn't like you? Give me some examples of what makes you feel that. Unless the individual has the ability to read minds, it is impossible to know what the other person is thinking. It does not make sense to always assume that the other people is thinking the worst of you. Helping other people is a wonderful way, a wonderful way to build self-esteem, and we talk about this all the time. I talk about the analogy that what you... When you do good, you get good. Karma, what goes around, comes around. And the analogy that I like to use is, is that we come to this world with nothing and we leave with nothing. So while you go through life, while you hit every, which we're going to talk about, every chapter in your book of life, why not share anything that you might have that's extra? Because when you help your neighbor with a loaf of bread, you will increase your self-esteem. When you help someone down the road who cannot drive for whatever reason and you give them a ride you will build your self-esteem the analogy here is is to help other people will help you kind of when i do these videos i don't merely do them just for you i happen to be very selfish because when i help you with these videos i help me daily with these videos that is the analogy here 
Helping other people is a wonderful way to build self-esteem. It makes the person feel useful and also means that they are spending less time judging themselves. It is possible for people to replace their negative thinking patterns with more positive ways of dealing with the world. They can do this by using gratitude journal or deliberately focusing on uh, the things that are positive in their life. People need to question any um, people need to question any should statements arise in their mind. This is usually just means of making themselves feel guilty about the things that they are not doing. When you have those thoughts of I should have, I could have, just think about I did this and I did this and I helped this person and I did this good. Concentrate on the positive when you let sunshine into your heart and your home. Remember, I always tell you, you get positive results. Learning to accept other people as a fallible makes it easier for the individual to accept their own limitations. Nobody, and I mean nobody, is perfect. God didn't create us to be perfect. God did create the majority of us to be a lot better. And that's why we as humans daily need to reach out to Him and try to become better each and every day. It doesn't happen overnight goes back to what I always say when we talk about the chapters in the book of life your chapters start at birth and your chapters end when when God finally takes you off this earth my chapter started in 1961 I'm now at chapter 52 gonna be 53 this month on Halloween is my birthday so my 53rd chapter will be starting to be written by me on October 31st 19. Uh, excuse me, 2014. From 1961 all the way to 1979, my parents, as role models, were there to help me write my first 17, 18 chapters of my book of life. You, as parents, God, uh, grandparents, or legal guardians, need to help your children or your grandchildren write their chapters in their book of life between zero, birth, and 17, 18 when they are ready to go to college or whatever they might do. You need to set an example as the role model. Because remember, it all starts with you in your home. You create the environment that your children uh, need to, to adhere to. As a role model, you should never ever smoke in your home. You should never ever drink in front of your children in your home. <clears throat> you should never ever use profanity in your home. And you should never, ever, anywhere, use physical violence. Those are four things that you should never do. And if you stick to those four things and you never do them, my cat must be around, and if you never do them, that is creating a at least 17 to 18 great chapters in the book of life for your children and including yourself because when you write their children, your children's books, uh, chapters in their books, you're creating your own as well. Those four things eliminated from your home will help your children go into society. It will shield your children from society. But if you do those four things at home, if you do smoke, drink, use profanity, and hit in your home, your children will go out into society and feel right, blend right in, because that's what society is all about. It is your job to be the role model. You are your children's hero. Monkey see, monkey do attitude. Whatever you do, they will do. God entrusted you with children. It is you to show God that you can handle being the leader that you are designated to be. Put these four things into your home. That will definitely help the chapters in the book of life for your children. Show love in your home. Show respect in your home. Show compassion in your home and show passion in your home. And if you do those four and eliminate the other four, this self-esteem issue is about 80% covered. Because we talked about on here some of the signs. It is the abuse which comes to the hitting or sexual. It is the um, lack of attention that the children are getting. That could be the love and uh, the compassion and the passion. It is the judgmental parents that constantly criticizes the children. Show compassion. Remember, you were a child too one time. 
So with all these things, you eliminate these four things, smoking, drinking, physical violence, and profanity, and add love, respect, compassion, and passion into your home, you will hopefully cut into a lot of this low self-esteem issues. And you will be the role model that God designated you to be. And you will prepare your children to go to, into society a better person. It's that simple. I am at my chapter 53 to come. What chapter are you in? And let me ask you this. If for some reason you have done these four consistently and constantly, why not let today, October 7, 2014, be a new chapter in your book of life? Because it's never ever too late to start fresh and start new and start changing. Are you using these four a lot because you have an addiction issue? And if you do have an addiction issue, whether it being drugs and or alcohol, can you finally say that you have a problem? And it's not that easy to admit because I know I've been there. I was there six, seven times saying I did have a problem, but I didn't mean it. When your world comes crashing down upon you, you'll know that this is it. When you reach up to your higher power and you ask for guidance and direction, you know this is it. So why not today, October 7, 2014, start rewriting the chapters, not only in your book, but in your children's book or your grandchildren's book. Why not today, October 7, 2014, stop with the drinking and the smoking and the hitting and the profanity in your home? Better yet, why not today, October 7, 2014, stop it at all? Become the leader that you are designated to be, the role model. If your children look at you as a hero, show them that you deserve that title. Show them. Start rewriting your chapters in your book of life. It doesn't matter what your past was like. It doesn't. If you're willing to today change, admit you have a problem, and reach to God, everything before then is immaterial. Just like when I coach in addiction, I don't care. Not that I don't care. I don't talk about what happened before. I concentrate on today and tomorrow. That is what you need to do. If you're ready to admit today, October 7th, 2014, and you want to re uh, start rewriting new chapters in your book of life, here are some methods on how to do that. Step number one is to finally didn't stop denying that you have a problem. And when you do that and you sincerely mean it, Step number two is to reach up to your higher power. Tell God that you obviously cannot control your own life because you wouldn't be in this predicament if you could. Ask God for guidance and direction, and he will lead you. Remember, you can have God without addiction, but you cannot fight addiction without God. So once you have those two steps, stop denying is step number one and reach out to God is number two. Then let's come up with a method of working with your addiction, depending on what stage of an addiction you have. Usually I go to this one the last, but if you are so bad off and you feel that you cannot be trusted at home, alone, because you might drink or smoke or do crack or whatever, go to a, a treatment center. They have the 30, 60 day, uh, 30, 60, 90 day programs most of them take insurances and Medicaid and if you don't have either go on the website the state website hopefully there's something in your state that uh, for financially challenged people that can help you if not text me at 631-599-0218 and I will try to help locate something for you within your area I have contacts that I am uh, in contact with uh, that I can go through and hopefully together as a team you and me we can find something for you. But remember this, when you are completed with your treatment, when you come out, two things you cannot do. You cannot fall back into your old habits and you cannot let your guard down because your addiction will stick with you for the rest of your life. 
I humbly sit here right now letting you know that I still have an addiction. The difference is, is I have learned to fight and live and work with it. And that's what you need to do. You need to keep educating yourself. So you're done with the treatment center or you checked into the treatment center. But you're not as bad off to even go into a treatment center. You can go to AA. They have the 12-step program. They have the do 90 meetings in the first 90 days. They have the classroom atmosphere. They have the textbook structured program. You can try that. You can use my methods. My methods are very simple. I have 16 alternative steps to the 12 steps, but mine are not structured where you have to take a certain step at a certain time. You can take whatever step you want. My methods are so simple. I educate, educate, educate myself. I do these videos to educate you, to educate me again. I walk the streets of where I used to be a drunk to interview people, to get real stories from real people. These are the real people out there and they do have real stories and if you notice I never edit anything. I don't condone the language but I will not take it out unless it's too graphic. Then I won't even put the interview on the air. Because if I start editing other people's stories, then they are not real stories from real people. These are my methods, and I will tell you they work. There are millions of people out there that have lived and survived and are living right now without going to AA. And I'm not judging AA. I am telling you that I did try AA, and for me, it was not good enough to just sit an hour in a classroom atmosphere and talk about stories. I needed to be more actively involved and that's my whole life has been like that. And I'm not talking about an addiction, I'm talking about my whole life is always I need to be actively involved. Use this analogy. You only get better at a certain job by actively, physically doing that job. Not reading out of a book. That is the analogy I will use. By me physically and actively daily doing what I do, whether it's videos, interviews, my websites, my coaching, that is on the job training. That is my job training to be a successful survivor of addiction. That is my job training to daily live with my addiction. And as I do that job, I include God into it which makes me a better whole person in combination of my educating myself daily with addiction issues and God being involved in each and every step of that it makes me a better person and it will make you a better person my methods compared to AA are like oil and vinegar not to say AA it doesn't work because it does work for millions just does not work for me and you might find it doesn't work for you but you might also find that my methods do not work for you you can jump from method to method you can do all three you can do other methods that are out there but no matter what you do folks one thing has to be included and that is your almighty power of I mean almighty God has to be included no matter what you do so when you're ready to deal uh, with the fact that you want to finally give up your drinking and the denial has stopped it is then and only then that your road to recovery will start and it will have to include God and that's when you honestly will take your life back and let me help you take your life back you can call me at 844-405-HELP you can text me at 631-599-0218. You can email me at C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at yahoo.com. Go to my websites www.clearviews.info and www.clearreform.com. Both of my um, uh, websites start with the word clear. The word clear was uh, made up by me, not the word itself, but the meaning, what I'm going to tell you now. A month after I hit rock bottom, I just thought because I started feeling clear, I thought to myself, what can I come up with to work with the word clear? Because I felt clear here and here. 
So I said, okay. So I sat there, and this only took me one day. Community, C is for community, L is for lessons, E is for empower, A is for addiction, and R is for recovery. Community lessons empower addiction recovery. Our lessons as a community, wherever you might be, where I'm here in the Hamptons, Long Island, wherever you might be watching me, not here just in this country, but in, in a global sense, wherever you are is a community and there are lessons within that community of alcohol and drug addicted people. Those lessons will empower all of us in our addiction recovery, whether it being alcohol and or drugs. Community Lessons and Power Addiction Recovery. Clearviews.info, clearreform.com. Let's touch base on addiction and low self esteem one more time. What is self esteem? What is the definition? Self esteem is a term used by psycholog psychologically to describe how humans think of themselves or judge themselves overall in relation to self worth. It can be described as confidence and satisfaction that is the individual has with his own life. The terms self-esteem and self-worth tend to be used interchangeably, although feelings of self-esteem tend to be more fluid than self-worth. What are some of the causes of self, uh, low self-esteem? People who have suf suffered any type of child abuse, whether it being physically or sexually or verbally. Parents fail to make their uh, children feel valued. That will cause uh, low self-esteem. Receiving too much criticism will also bring down self-esteem. That's where those role leadership that I told you about. You need to love, respect, passion, and compassion in your household. And the other one about the physical abuse, the smoking, and the profanity, that needs to stop too. Um, the way people treat each other, peers in school, that will bring down self, uh, I mean, that will affect the self-esteem. Uh, being victim of racism, I, folks, we got to stop this with the racism. I thought it was way behind us, but uh, it, it seems like it's uh, kind of coming back a little bit. We have an Afro-American president, and that says it all right there, that we are all created equally by God. Color doesn't matter, race doesn't matter, nationality shouldn't matter, or it doesn't matter, it shouldn't. All of these shouldn't matter. Sometimes it does matter to some people. The Archie Bunker days are over, folks. When people feel that they do not really fit in anywhere, it will change the way they feel about themselves. You ever walk into a party and you look around and people start looking at you? That will bring you down, right? The effects of uh, low self-esteem. Failure to value one leads to fa failure to take care of oneself. You have to be mentally and physically fit constantly. If you are overweight, I understand. Believe me, I am about 16 pounds overweight myself. Does not mean that I am any less valuable to me or to others. What it does mean is that I have to watch what I eat. I love my candy and my cake. I used to love my alcohol. That's one of the biggest things about when you give up an addiction or when you give up a certain thing that you were addicted to. You find an alternative. The difference between the candy and the cake compared to the alcohol is just that I am clear-minded, clear-headed, uh, and my heart is very clear. And I will tell you this, it is okay to eat some junk food. So if you are you have low self-esteem because you are a little overweight, don't be. Don't be. Individuals with low self-esteem are far more likely to turn to alcohol and drugs because they feel that they can get away from the situation. When they use the drugs and alcohol, they don't even think about what people think about them at that point. It can be hard for in such individuals to trust other people, people with low self-esteem, because every time they trust, they get hurt because the other people let them down. These individuals will be highly insecure in relationships. What are symptoms of low self-esteem? Individuals live in fear of change and uncertainty. They will tend to assume that other people think badly of them. People with low self-esteem tend to see anything 
and everything in black and white. There is no in between. Everything is either right or wrong. Such individuals are always putting themselves down. A bit humorous way too. You know, <laughs> look at my weight. <laughs> I look like the Pillsbury boy. That is a sign. When people have low self-esteem, they will tend to always uh, be suspicious of other people's motives. High expectations of other people followed by disappointment when these individuals seem to let them down is one of the reasons. Low self-esteem leads to jealousy in relationships. People in this category may achieve something but will still not be satisfied. They will find it hard to deal with compliments and will doubt the sincerity of those who offer the compliment. These individuals will often be too needy and this can put too much pressure on their relationship. How do we increase our self-esteem? It can help if people become more aware of one's inner thoughts. Those mental games is what kills our esteem constantly. We always think of the worst. It is vital that people learn to challenge their faulty thinking. Tell the devil out in your mind to get out. You know, you ever see the angel on one shoulder and the devil and the devil is whispering to this ear and the angel into this ear and it's somewhere stuck in here. Wing them off, the devil off your shoulder. Helping other people is the best way. I'm telling you, it works. It works. A little bit here and there is all you have to do. I'm not saying dedicate your whole life to helping people, although that would be perfect. Just a little bit will improve your self-esteem. It is possible for people to replace their negative thinking patterns with more positive ways to deal with the world. They can do this by using gratitude, journal, or deliberately focusing on the positive things in life. Let the sunshine into your heart and into your home, and I guarantee you will get nothing but positive results. Eliminate the darkness and the negative. When you do that, you will get better results, folks. You will get better results. Learning to accept other people as a fallible makes it easier for individuals to accept their own limitations. If you learn to accept other people's faults, you will not set your own standards too high. Learn to accept other people's faults. Because remember, nobody is perfect. God created you in as close as perfect form that you can be at birth. Then you, as a human, in conjunction with your parents, the first nine, eight, 17, 18 years, molded yourself to whatever you were then. And then you, from that point on, started writing your own chapters in your book of life. If those chapters weren't out of control like they did for me, then that's when you need to hit rock bottom and you need to reach out to God and start changing your ways. Remember, when you drink and you do drugs, your self-esteem is not getting any better. It's just being clouded by the drugs and alcohol. The only way to get your self-esteem back is to do some of these things. Start learning to help people. Folks, tonight when you go to bed, instead of pushing your slippers under, uh, uh, at the edge of your bed or your sneakers at the edge of the bed before you climb into bed, push them under your bed. That way, tomorrow morning when you get up and you have to get those slippers, sneakers, or shoes, you will go on your knees to go and get them. And while you're on your knees, remember to thank God for another day on this earth. For every breath that you take right now, there's someone that's not taking the breath at all anymore. They just took their last breath. For every time you blink your eyes, there's somebody that just closed their eyes for the last time. So why not praise God and thank him daily for another day on this beautiful earth? And start sharing whatever you might have. The analogy is that you came to this earth with nothing and that's how you're leaving. So if you think that all this world possessions that you have is going to come with you, you are wrong. So why not start sharing some of that? When you die and your coffin is put into a hearse, do not think that your personal possessions will be loaded into U-Haul and that U-Haul will be behind that hearse. That hearse will go alone to your resting place with your family, uh, of course, being sad and all that, but you will go to your resting place alone. You came to this earth 
alone and you're going to leave this earth alone. So whatever world possessions you have, start sharing them today. And those possessions that you might find that are just sitting at home is somebody else's treasure. And that will bring up your self-esteem when you help other people. When you buy a loaf of bread and that loaf of bread sits around your house for a whole week and at the end of the week you only ate half a loaf so you threw out the other half a loaf and you have a neighbor that you know is financially strapped or challenged, why not take a half a loaf of that bread and bring it fresh to that neighbor? Chris, remember, a half a loaf of bread to someone is better than no bread at all. If you have a few extra dollars, why not buy some groceries for your neighbor or your family member or even give some money? When you help other people, it will guarantee you to bring your self-esteem up and will guarantee to come back in twofold for you. So with all this said, if today, October 7th, is your new chapter you want to start writing, do it in those two ways that I said. Stop denying that you have an issue. Admit the facts that you have uh, an alcohol and or drug issue and then accept God to help you with guidance and direction. When you do those things, not everything will be perfect the first couple of days. Things will be tough for you. You will crave, crave, and crave, and you might have the uh, uh, jitters and the shakes, but after about a week or two, things will fall into place and become better. Then after a couple months, they start looking even better. After a year, they look even better, etc. You get the feel. Your life will come together at, in a whole again. And people will notice the differences in you. They will notice how you carry yourself, how you speak, how you treat other people, and how you look. Is any drug or any alcohol worth losing your family? Is any alcohol, any drug worth dying for? Because if it is worth for you to die for it, you are selfish because when you die, you're taken away from other people, whether it's financially you're taken away because you're the breadwinner, or it's emotional because those people depended on you and loved you. No matter what, it is a selfish act to keep drinking and doing drugs knowing that it's possibly going to kill you. It is a selfish act. And shame on you for being selfish. So forget about what happened yesterday. Start today. It's a new day. It's a new day start today and remember a sober today will guarantee to give you a better tomorrow and when I explain things if you believe it's clear in here if you believe it all in here it will become clear there remember community lessons empower addiction recovery it will become clear your lessons will empower addiction recovery your lessons include blackouts your lessons include DWIs, your lessons include uh, possibly relationship break breakups, financial destruction. Those are your community lessons, but they will empower addiction recovery because those are things that you've gone through and you know you can change them. But the only way to change them is to today start admitting you have a problem and go to your higher power. That's the only ways. Let the sunshine into your heart and into your home and you will get nothing but positive results. Eliminate the darkness. The negativity will bring you down and it's like cancer. It will absorb you. Eliminate it. Avoid negative people as much as you can, especially in the beginning of your recovery. You need to focus on you and you alone and you need to focus on anything that's positive. And you can always I mean, always text me at 631-599-0218. You can call me at 844-405-HELP, and it can be merely just to talk. We'll just chat. We'll talk about your present situation and your future situation. We will just chat. I will tell you what I went through. My website, www.clearviews.info, tells you what I've gone through. I tell you what I've gone through on my today 150th videotape. 150 videotape, average an hour a piece or more, or sometimes a little less. That is a lot of testimony. That is a huge amount of testimony. And I am not ashamed to tell you I have an addiction to alcohol. But just as much as I'm not ashamed to tell you that, I am happy to tell you I've learned to live with it. And so can you. 
I hope everybody has a great today, which is Tuesday, October 7th, 2014. And I hope to God that God keeps us all around for tomorrow's video. But in the meantime, try to have a sober day and God bless you.